All right, guys, uh, Fulo coming to you with another video. Shout out to the whole LDBC. Um, if you like this video, please uh, up like the page. And if you further want to like be tuned in to what I got going on, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to the page. And also, if you want, hit the notification icon so you can know what's uh, coming. Now, I'm going to go into uh, something because I'm reading. The thing is, with me, like, I, I try to, like, read, like, three books at a time, at most. Like, I try to do three. So, the one the ones I'm reading right now is I'm reading one on, uh, you know, Africa, Cuba, and uh, Washington. That's, that's one of the books I'm reading. The second book I'm reading is has to do with uh, Eritrea and its independent struggle. And the third book I'm reading is uh, The Wretched of the Earth by uh, Franz uh, Fanon. I try to go in between each of them. So I was reading... Um, something on uh, the Eritrean thing. And I want to kind of tap into that a little bit more. And I want to kind of put it uh, with um, something that my friend, my Cuban friend uh, put on Facebook. The United States government actually spent $30 million last year trying to overthrow the Cuban government and overthrow Cuban sovereignty. Um, and, you know, when you when you look at Eritrea, right, like if you if you go to YouTube, you have to be very specific in what you're looking for about Eritrea, because what comes up is like a lot of propaganda. Um, they call it, um, they call it, uh, you know, Africa's Cuba, you know, they, they put all this propaganda that, you know, Eritrea is some kind of like uh, prison state that you can't do anything. You can't even have a mobile phone. You can't, um, millions of people are fleeing from there and things like that. And so while I don't doubt there are internal conflicts in that country, as with every other country, you know, don't get it twisted. Every, every country has its challenges. Eritrea is no less, you know. And so the thing is, is that I think the reason why they call Eritrea like Africa's Cuba or Africa's North Korea or whatever, the reason why they call it that is for the simple fact that it wants to do things in a grassroots, build up its own, learn itself. Like it wants to squeeze its own fruits. You, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't want to be in economic or ideolo ideological or that kind of debt with other countries who, you know, pretend to be their friends, but really they're just like hitmen trying to, um, you know, basically uh, use that country for its, um, for their own purposes. Now, it's interesting that I read in this book that I read about Eritrea. Because, you know, a lot of things have been made up of about, like, Pan-Africanism and things like that. About the ideology of Pan-Africanism. And I've never identified myself as a Pan-Africanist. You know, I've never had that, that, ideology, um, that ideology, you know, for myself. I never identified with it. And the reason being is, how can you, like, call for, like, a united Africa and things like that when there's conflicts in the country you know you haven't even united a, a country first like for example um, 
you can't call for pan-Africanism if, uh, you know, there's two warring tribes in your own country. You know, it makes no sense. You know, that that's like basically putting the carriages um, before the horses. You know what I mean? Like, you got to solve that problem first before you move on to, like, um, you know, on a global scale. So, and here's another thing, too. Um, in reading this book, you learn that, you know, a, a country that wants sovereignty, you know, and wants to do it themselves and wants to learn from its own mistakes and not do those mistakes anymore is going to be under attack. It's going to be, no matter what. And that's what, why I think there are similarities between Cuba and um, Eritrea. Because, for example... Uh, me, I can speak from experience, like from going to Cuba. You know, from going to Cuba, Cuba is no different from any other country in terms of its day-to-day -day operations, in terms of people waking up for work, in terms of kids going to school, in terms of people uh, figuring out new ways to make money, in terms of the hustle and bustle that you'll see anywhere else. It's just at a different speed and it's just laid back and things are in place to keep certain things from happening. You know, when I was there, I really, I, I can count only on one hand how many homeless people I saw in that country. Whereas in the United States, I can walk outside every day and I'm gonna see a homeless person. You know, as a matter of fact, when I go to the library to like do my work and uh, you know, organize different um, business strategies. Like I'll see like five homeless people in there. You feel me? And so the same thing is with Eritrea in terms of it being attacked. Because now I'm not saying that everything that is said about Eritrea is false. I'm not saying that you know there aren't problems there i'm not saying that you know things are 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 peachy there but they overlook some of the progress that that country's made they overlook that 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 country is the only country in the horn of africa that that has developed a way for food self-sufficiency they overlook the fact that that country has developed uh fisheries for different for eco, different economic sectors the thing is about that country is because it's not material like because it's not a resource rich place in Africa people want it and the United States mostly wants it for its geographical um, strategic location you know the reason, one of the reasons why the United States didn't even want to give it independence is because, um, I want to say they were trying to build a, a military base there. They were trying to build a military base at, at that place. You know what I mean? And so another thing that needs to be said too is with the Pan-Africanism, and this is no disrespect to Ethiopia, I'm just keeping it on a historic level but um the, the you know ethiopia used pan-africanism as a means of usurping eritrea into its plans and just grouping it all into one thing but really marginalizing the ethnic groups which uh, encompass eritrea and as a matter of fact because it was under the cloak of um, African unity. You know, it had help from Israel. It had help from the United States as well. 
and you know not and the United States and Israel knew that what they were doing they simply didn't care because it was in their interest to do this you know it was in their interest to have them do this because of the simple fact that they figured that since Ethiopia would um, be subservient to them that it would benefit them in the long run you know what I mean and so you know when, 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 when we see things like this and when you read things like this you realize what what really the the bigger picture is in certain things it's the same thing with Latin America places like Cuba and Venezuela and at one time Bolivia who wanted to do things in a different way that did not conform to the greater Latin America you become under attack you're going to be attacked it's just what it is unfortunately okay and so that's exactly what happens and the same thing is happening with Eritrea you know Eritrea has been accused of funding Al-Shabaab. Eritrea has been accused of funding Hamas. Eritrea has been accused of all types of things, okay? And I'm not saying that, you know, I, I have to reiterate, it's not a perfect place, okay? But from what I've seen and what I've watched as far as EPLF documentaries, is concerned their original purpose was noble but what happened is when the united states put sanctions on you when the united states uh squeezes and starts you out you you kind of like you, you're kind of in desperate measures so some people have to leave and some others you know are in like i want to say sensitive situations you know and that's kind of like me and my friend from Cuba were having a conversation about that you know because you know the United States I, I made a video about it before the United States only lets you fly to Havana and I need to get to Santiago de Cuba you know what I mean and it's not it's, it can't happen no more because of the simple fact that you know there's only one uh, place you can go from here so you know now we have to find a way around that you know what I mean? But, um, you know, what I will say is that, you know, I've, I've come to realize one thing. I've come to realize, with, with all of my, with my reading, I'm not going to say all of my reading, but with my reading, I've come to realize that if you are a nation that want to develop on your own that want to not take handouts that really aren't handouts that really are chains uh, to because it's debt enslavement if you're a nation that wants to control its own destiny if you're a nation that wants to be its own entity and do it from the ground up you will be attacked. Hence Cuba, hence Venezuela, hence North Korea, hence Eritrea, hence at one time Grenada. When you are taking a different course that isn't um, cohesive and conforming with the order of the day in this country, then you will be under attack. And, and that's just what it is, you know. So in a way, I can see the comparisons to, uh, to Cuba in terms of how Eritrea wants to do things. I can see those comparisons. Um, and you know what the ironic thing is? As, as, as the United States says that it was afraid of communism spreading, it had no problem assisting a Marxist uh, communist 
Ethiopian government with weapons against Eritreans who were fighting for self-determination. That's what's ironic about it. You know, but with that being said, you know, I'm just gonna like sign out of this video right now. Um, I just thought it was interesting. You know, the thing is about me is that although I'm from West Africa, any country that is doing something right, that is doing it and trying to do it on its own, I'm likely to be drawn towards more than anything else. You know, um, if it's trying to break really true from that colonial yoke, then I'm going to be drawn to it more and more and more. You feel me? And so this this project, or I guess you can say this uh, research that I've been doing with Eritrea has kind of um, attracted like me to like Eritreans uh, in general because of the simple fact that, you know, um, a lot of people and that is just what it is. Like a lot of people have heard, never really heard of Eritrea and the only reason why they heard of it is because of um, the big homie Nip Hustle. But, you know, I've been kind of into this before, you know, before me and him even crossed paths. And so because of this, you know, um, one of them, what one Eritrean said, uh, he's, he's like, it's time for you to make pilgrimage, bro, to go to Eritrea, you know? And I said, you know what? You're right. You know, why not? And so, you know, uh, this summer, we uh, already booked the flight. You know, I'm going to go to Asmara and I'm going to go. I definitely want to go to Kirin too. And I'm going to go to Masawa, you know, and by then I should have a good camera to document my journey, you know, because with the Cuba journey that I took, the camera wasn't as high quality as I needed to be. But now um, with this Eritrean uh, trip, it's going to be high quality. You know, it was in between me going back home to uh, Bissau, Cape Verde, and Senegal. And I figured that, you know, maybe um, during the, I'm thinking like maybe during winter, I can go back there you know but I think the summer I made up my mind and I just wanted to go there to Eritrea and you know possibly spend my birthday out there too you know and so yeah that's that's what the game plan is and you know we're just putting things into play in order to do that you know the messed up thing about this whole situation is that it's more it's cheaper to go to Europe than it is to go to Africa and different parts of Latin America where the United States don't want you to go, you know? But yeah, man, um, it's been a while since I've been on African soil, so I just want to get that feeling again. I actually just want to go there and kiss the soil, actually, you know what I mean? Uh, but also, of course, check out, you know, what's behind all of this, you know? Definitely, because you know, it's a fascinating story. You know, it's a very fascinating story. And um, I can just see it, as I've said before, I, I've, I've mentioned this many of times, that the demeanors of Ethiopians and Eritreans and Somalians are, are quite different. You know, the demeanors are very, very different. And, you know, the, the demeanors of Eritreans are on my speed more than the other two. You know what I mean? And I can appreciate that. Yeah, I can appreciate them for having, like having an example of self-determination and having an example of, um, you know, wanting to do for self. And, you know, be, with examples like this, I apply this to business and just different things, you know, di different areas of life, you know what I mean? But yeah, well, anyhow, man, that's all I got for now. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. And I'll be back with some more. Fuller signing out. Enjoy.